Good morning, all. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. He made this day especially for you and for me, that he may receive glory and honor and praise that he has to come. Today we want to thank God for you that if you have been a regular subscriber, we thank God for you. If this is your first time, welcome. We just ask God to, to help us as we go through these lessons that they may enrich us and encourage us to continue to fight us. Let's pray. Father, we come now in the name of your son, Jesus. We thank you, God, for this day, for it is a day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, we pray that you bless our time together, that you will be glorified in all that is done. Help us to share you to your people, that, that you may receive all glory, honor, and praise. It is in Jesus' name that we do pray. Amen. Today, our lesson speaks of confident faith confident faith. And, and it, it's a couple of words that we want to look at. Worry and anxiety. Because of our relationship with Jesus Christ, we should not worry or be anxious for anything. So, so today, our lesson says confident faith. And the point is, faith displaces worry. Faith displaces worry. Our lesson text comes from Luke 12, 22 through 34. And as we as we look at this, the song said, if we're gonna pray, don't worry. If you if you pray, don't worry. If you gon' worry, don't pray. So so we gotta have confidence. That's the faith. We have to believe that he's gonna do what he say he's gonna do. We just we just believe that. You gotta believe that because of the fact that he is a man that he will not lie. And therefore, we must believe he said he, he said it, and we must believe that he will do it. Luke 12, 22 to 26, it reads, And he said unto his disciples, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, neither for the body, what you shall put on, the life is more than meat. The body is more than raiment. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor barns, and God feedeth them. How much more are ye better than fowls? And which of you with Taken thought can add his stat add to his stature a cubit. If ye then be able to do the do that which is least, why take ye thought for the rest? Worry does not help. He he, he said he he said that. Uh, uh, to take thought, he asked to take thought, to, to, to worry about today. What why why are you thinking about to today or, or tomorrow? What 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 you're thinking about? Take thought. Don't 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 worry about what's happening. Don't worry about what you are going to eat or or don't worry about what you're gonna put on. Because he is the provider of it all. He he will give everything that you need. And then he says, life is more than meat and, and, and the body more than raiment. So, so you shouldn't worry about what you're going to eat. 
Neither should you worry about what you're going to put on. Because if he provides for the fowls of the air, he will provide for you. And he says, consider the ravens, the birds, uh, for they neither sow nor reap, which neither have a storehouse nor barn, but God feeds them. If he feeds the little bitty birds, you being, you and I being his prized possessions, won't he provide for us? Yeah, yeah, he will. He, he, he'll provide for us. And, and, and what good is it for you to worry about it anyway? Can you do anything about it? Can't do nothing about it. So why why are you worried about it? So we, we, we should not worry because worry does not help the situation. Here are some lasting truths for this first hour. We can trust God to provide what we need. Worry is unproductive. Worry smothers trust. When you worry, that means you don't trust God to do what you say he's going to do. Rather than worry about material things, look at how God has blessed you and continues to work on your behalf. The second outline, Luke 12, 27 to 30. He continues to talk about it. He says, consider the lilies, how they grow. They toil not, they spin not. And yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothes the grass, which is today in the field and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O you of little faith? Seek not ye what you ye shall eat or what ye shall drink. Neither be doubtful, neither be ye of doubtful mind. For all these things do the nation of the world seek out, and your father knows that ye need, ye have need of these things. God knows what we need. See, he said, and then he continues with it with the things of and with nature, the lilies. Do, do the lilies have to struggle and grow? No. The, the, the lilies, how they toil, how they spin, and all of that. And look at the grass. He, he, clo he clothes the grass, and, and, and they're in the field, but they, and then on tomorrow, he, he, could, he could change. At, 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 at his word, he could change whatever he needs to change. How much more will he clothe you? He know we need clothing. He knew the, he know the things that we have need of before we ask him. He knows it. And so and so we, we don't have to worry. Worry creates another problem in itself. We don't have to worry because God knows exactly what we have need of. And we don't have to be, be stressing and worrying and, and anxious for anything because he knows what we have need of. That, that's that confident faith. Because he knows what we have need of, we believe that he's going to give the things that we need. Here are some lasting truths. Worry and anxiety are characteristics of unbelief, unbelievers, not people of faith. 
because God is God, is a God of love, he will take care of his children. God knows what we need. The third out, Luke 12, 31 to 34. <clears throat> and it says, but rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added to you. Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell that ye have, and give on. Provide yourself bags which wax not old, a treasure in heaven that falleth not. Where no thief approaches, neither moth corrupted. For where your treasure is, your heart will be also. Seek the things of God. We must seek the things of God. If this is similar to this, Luke 31 is similar to Matthew 6 and 33. Uh, so, so they they're saying the same thing. We must seek the things of God first. When we put Him first, He will add everything else for us. When we put His kingdom first, put Him first, and and and, and you don't need to fear because He knows we need. Uh, uh, if your father good pleasure. For it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Then if we put him first, we, we could sell what you have, and give it to others, uh, and put it in a bag that don't get old. When you put your treasures in heaven, see, see, we, we cannot put our, our trust and treasure in things on the earth. But we, we cannot, we, can, we cannot do that because if you put your 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 possessions, if you put your put your trust in things and possessions, God is nowhere in, in, in that. He says, "Seek the kingdom of God." But that's what we must be. And, and then, and, and thirty-four, he says. For where your treasure is, where you put your trust in, what do you take pride in? What do you really, 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 really trust in? If you put your trust in your money, in your home, in your car, in your boat, then that's where your heart is. That, that possession is not going to be real good. Okay, because it says, for where your treasure is. There, your heart will be also. So, so it's important for us. We are to seek the kingdom and don't put our trust in man and things on the earth because they will fade away. The things on the earth will fade away. It's important for us to make sure we, we put our trust in the Lord. Trust him in, with, with all our heart and don't lean on our own understanding. And he, he will direct our path. Here are some lasting truths. Pursuing the, rules of, the rule of God is to be the priority of disciple of Jesus. The possessions of this world are temporary, temporal, and things of God are eternal. We will be driven to invest ourselves in whatever is at the center of our being, that which is the most important. Our attitude towards possessions becomes measure, a measure of the depths of our discipleship. So then remember, faith displaces worry. And you don't need to worry because God knows exactly what we need and what we need to ask for. Until next time, may God richly bless you, my beloved.